it's Dr. Joe DeMarco, chiropractor and owner of Ocremet Health. On today's video, we're going to be discussing low back pain and some techniques on how you can relieve it. Before we do, if you haven't done so already, I'd appreciate it if you just take a second, subscribe to my channel, Ocremet Health on YouTube, click that little bell notification. It notifies you every time I upload a new video. And at the end of today's video, if you find the information helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Lower back pain is a real common problem just among the general population. Most people at some point during their life experience some form of lower back pain. You're lucky actually if you can go through your entire life and you only experience lower back pain once or even twice. That's actually unusual. You'd be in the minority. There's a lot of people out there that deal with lower back pain that continues to reoccur, whether it's once a, once a year, once a month, once a week. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that suffer with ongoing lower back pain. Now, there's a difference between those two, those two types of people. The person who probably had maybe one or two episodes of lower back pain over a 40-year span, they probably injured their lower back doing something. Maybe they lifted something too heavy. Maybe they just twisted the wrong way, but there's usually an injury involved. It's a, it's a freak accident. They, it happens just once and their lower back may never bother them again. We're not, we're not talking about that group of people because that's just, you know, that could happen to anybody. The other group of people, the people that deal with the, like kind of chronic lower back pain, in other words, in 33 years of practice, I've seen all different types of lower back pain and all different types of people that have lower back pain. And I'm talking today about the people that, you know, that, that are coming in like once a month with lower back pain. In other words, one, one day it could be they woke up with it. The next month they might have picked up uh, something really light off the floor and they had lower back pain. The next day they could have been sitting for a while at a football game and they had lower back pain. So there's like no rhyme or reason. They just do a random thing and they have lower back pain. Those people usually have some type of mechanical issue going on with the back. It's not an acute injury. You don't have an acute injury sleeping at night. So if you wake, you wake up with lower back pain one morning, I mean, it's not like you just tried to lift 300 pounds. I mean, it, it, you know, why, do you, why does your lower back hurt after sleeping? Or why does it hurt after sitting? Or why does it hurt after taking a drive in your car? I mean, there's a mechanical issue going on that we have to figure out what it is and try to fix it. Now, there's a lot of different types of mechanical issues. We can be talking about stability issues, mobility issues. There's lots of different types. So what we're going to focus in on today, I thought I'd, I'd pick a more common mechanical issue for lower back pain. And that is with, when the pelvis goes into an anterior tilt, when it goes into an anterior position, and people have that uh, kind of a chronic anterior pelvic tilt, and that's causing their lower back pain. And that's what we're going to discuss today. So let's talk a little bit about an anterior pelvic tilt. An anterior pelvic tilt is when you're looking at someone from the side and the pelvis has gone anterior. It's gone in this direction. So it's tilted, it's tilted this way, okay? When that happens, a couple the, the look of that is that usually the buttocks becomes more prominent and these people have a sway back. Now, it may not be as noticeable. Some people don't have like a, a huge anterior pelvic tilt, other people have a very noticeable anterior pelvic tilt. But either way, we want to address this when, when the pelvis has gone anterior and it creates that sway back, which is putting pressure into the lower back, which, is, which makes it very susceptible to lower back pain. Now you can think of the pelvis like a seesaw. You know, when you have a seesaw, if the person on one end is too heavy, what happens that person's down and the other person goes up in the air, right? It, it, it's, it, it, it gets off balance. And this, this is exactly what happens with the pelvis. On the front of the pelvis, we have our hip flexor muscles. For example, the psoas. Now the psoas is attached into the lumbar spine. It comes through the pelvis and it's attached to the upper part of the femur bone, the leg bone. Psoas muscles and other hip flexor muscles are chronically tight on a lot of people. Why? A lot of people do a lot of sitting. Uh, sitting creates a lot of tightness in the hip flexors. When you're in a seated position, your hip flexor muscles are shortened. You leave muscles in a shortened position over time, day after day after day. They become shorter. They get tight. They build up adhesions. You can think of these adhesions just as like I have here in this band as like knotting. So these, 
the, these hip flexor muscles, in, like I said, there's the psoas may be your primary. There's other hip flexor muscles. You have your iliacus. You have your um, your uh, rectus femoris, one of your quadricep muscles that actually cross the hip joint that aids in hip flexion. These muscles, if they become tight, they you can think of it as being knotted. They're shorter, and they're like the heavy, the heavier person on the seesaw. They're pulling down on the pelvis in this direction, pulling it into an anterior pelvic tilt. Now the lighter person on the seesaw is, is you can think of as the hamstrings. The hamstrings attach to the pelvis on the other side. And a lot of times these hamstring muscles, it's not that they're knotted, it's that they're weak. Why are they weak? Because a lot of people are deconditioned. They don't exercise their hamstrings. They don't keep the muscle, the muscle toned. They don't keep in condition. And these hamstring muscles are weak. And when these hamstring muscles are weak, they can't resist the tightness from the hip flexors in the front. So the hip flexors are pulling down because they're tight. They're pulling the, the, the pelvis this way. The weak hamstrings um, allow it to happen. And, and the pelvis ends up going into an anterior position, creating low back stress. So in today's video, we're going to go over some techniques to help this type of a problem by going over how to loosen up those hip flexor muscles and strengthening those hamstring muscles. Okay, so let's start with strengthening the hamstrings. I'm gonna get on the floor. I'm gonna show you a couple different variations. The first thing we're gonna do is like a, a bridge, lying back, the knees are bent up, the arms are by your side, and we're gonna lift that buttocks and torso off the ground as far as you can, squeeze through the hamstrings and the glutes right through here. Hold for a thousand one, thousand two, just touch down, as soon as you touch down, come right back up. We wanna shoot for three sets of 15 repetitions on these. Now, a variation of this that you can do, especially if you get to three sets of 15 or three sets of 20 and it becomes too easy, is take a piece of cardboard or you can use a, what we call a slider, a plastic slider that'll slide on a, on a carpet, or you could probably use some just in socks if you're on a, a wood floor and your feet are on and you have socks on. We want something that your feet can slide. What you're gonna do, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the slider under your heels or the piece of cardboard or whatever you're using, and you're gonna get into this uh, that position again here, but this time what we're gonna do, instead of dropping the buttocks down, we're gonna slowly extend out the legs till your legs are straight. Now I have my buttocks still off the ground, and then I'm gonna curl it in with the hamstrings. So a little more difficult variation using, like I said, a piece of cardboard or using a slider and trying to build up to three sets of 15 uh, using that exercise. Either exercise is fine. Whether you, you, you do the slider, you just do the bridges, either is fine. Then we're gonna move on to some straight leg deadlifts. I want you to grab a bar or a couple dumbbells and we're going to stand up and what we're going to do on this movement is the legs are going to keep, you're going to have a slight bend in the knees and now we're going to bend forward. Think of bringing your buttocks and, and pu pushing it towards the wall behind you. So you're going to kind of stick out that buttocks this way, keep the back flat, keep the head neutral. I don't want to weigh up and I don't want to looking down. Try to keep the head neutral. I want you to go down as far as you can so you feel that stretch in the hamstrings. Feel a good stretch and then stand up and as you come up, try to squeeze those hamstrings and the glutes just like that. So stick the buttocks out, come down, keep the backs nice and straight, keep the head neutral, get that nice stretch and then stand up. Just like that. I want you to use a weight that you can get 15 repetitions and we're going to do that for three sets. You can do three sets of the first exercise, three sets of the second exercise. You can superset them. You can do it without rest. Do the, do the bridges first, and then without doing any rest, get your set of straight leg deadlifts, deadlifts in. You can do it any way, but those are the two exercises I want you to start doing every other day. Okay, so we're gonna move on to some mobility work for the hip flexors. There's more than one hip flexor. I mean, the main hip flexor is the psoas muscle. As we mentioned, the psoas muscle attaches into the lumbar spine and it attaches onto the femur. It doesn't attach directly on the front of the femur. It actually attaches around the, towards the back of the femur. So when we do the hip flexors, we're gonna do a couple variations to, to hit 
all of the hip flexors, including that important psoas muscle, okay? So I'm gonna show you some different stretches for the, for the uh, hip flexors. So this is what we're gonna do. First, first um, hip flexor stretch we're gonna do, just get down, if I wanna stretch the right hip flexors, one leg is in front, I'm on this knee. Now it's important when you're stretching the hip flexors to, especially the psoas, to keep your torso nice and straight and upright. Because if I want to lean forward to stretch those hip flexors, if I start to go forward with my torso, all I'm doing is bringing the upper part of my psoas closer to the lower part of my psoas, and I'm going to defeat the purpose of the stretch. So you're going to be doing one of these. You're going to be stretching really far out, but your torso is down, and you're not going to really get any stretch on the psoas. So it's super important when you're stretching the hip flexors, the psoas in particular, to keep that torso up, nice and straight, nice and tight, and lean forward without dropping the shoulders or the torso. So you're not gonna need to stretch forward as far as if I was doing this. So torso's up, I'm gonna open this angle here, keep the torso up. You can put your arms in front, you can hold your arms overhead, whatever you need as a cue to keep that, that upper body upright. And we're gonna hit this position where you feel a nice stretch here, you're gonna hold it for 30 seconds, breathing deeply, and I want you to do that three times. Now, as I mentioned, the psoas is not attached in the front here, it's around the back. So the, another variation of this stretch is I do the same exact stretch, but this time I'm gonna rotate this leg into this position. So I'm gonna rotate the leg, and then I'm gonna square myself this way. Now I've brought the attachment of the psoas more into the, in line with the rest of the muscle. So it's a simple turning of the leg from here to here, now when you do this, once again, you're keeping the torso straight again, you'll notice you're not gonna be able to stretch as far forward, which is fine. Some people, when they first do it, they say, ah, I don't really feel it, I don't know, it doesn't seem to work. Give it some time, practice. Do a little practice, get into, fool around with it a little bit, fi find the right position. When you find that right position and you, and you, and you open this up, you really feel a great stretch on that psoas muscle. So play around with the position, but once again, once you find that position, you hit that position, shoulders are squared this way, hold it for 30 seconds, do that three times. Take it up a notch now, we can do a stretch where we're gonna just get, grab a bench or something that you can hook your foot on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, the back foot up on the bench like that. And there's kind of two parts of this stretch. One is I'm gonna drop down this way. Once again, we're keeping that torso straight up. Don't let it drop forward. I'm gonna drop down, and as I drop down, I'm gonna bring my buttocks towards my heels. So I'm just letting my body weight just fall down just like this. This is much more intense. So be careful if you're new at this, try to you know, use a wall, hold onto a wall, hold onto the bench, hold onto a chair. But eventually we wanna basically, basically let the weight drop down, have the buttocks towards the heel and the torso nice and straight. 30 seconds, breathing comfortably, do it three times. To, to do that same stretch and to really, or a similar version of that, and to get that psoas again, take the, put the bench on the opposite side, like this. Get on this leg, and this, this time I'm gonna hook the foot on the bench, but we're gonna do it with the, the leg once again rotating. So I'm gonna hook that leg up on the bench like this. And now I have a rotation in that leg it's turned so my foot is actually right here it's on the side here so i got that that turning of the leg i got my torso up straight and i'm going to lean my buttocks right into that heel can you see that foot it's right there if you need to hold on to the bench you may want to you may you, this position being awkward it may kind of want to pull you off to the side just do what you can to keep the torso straight hold on to the bench keep the buttocks to the heel and now this is the position I'm gonna feel this great stretch on the psoas, and I'm gonna breathe through it for 30 seconds, and I'm gonna do it three times. You can do these stretches every day to help loosen up your hip flexors, they're awesome. Okay, so get working on those techniques. Uh, remember a couple different things. One, everyone has various degrees of the position of their pelvis. So if you have a very severe anterior pelvic tilt, it's gonna require more time to fix than if someone has just a mild anterior pelvic tilt. The other issue, have you had that anterior pelvic tilt, not for months, but for years and years? It's gonna require some time to fix it. So be patient, work on these techniques, the stretches, the exercises, and keep at it. You're gonna notice 
some, some changes going on. It, it, they're going to be subtle changes. You're going to start maybe noticing less low back pain. You might start noticing a, uh, less sway in your lower back. A little at a time. Progress, not perfection. You know, but this isn't going to be fixed in one day. So, so be patient. The other thing I should mention is make sure that you're properly warmed up before you're doing these stretches and exercises. Never do them first thing in the morning right out of bed. Make sure you warm up, move around, do them at the end of the workout, do them after uh, walking 10, 15 minutes on the treadmill, but just make sure you're warmed up, okay? Best of luck to everybody. Leave me some comments in the comments section down below after you've tried them or you've tried them for a little while. Let me know what you think. Remember, stay young, train hot. Hey, if you haven't done so already, take a moment right now, visit my website, www.okramedhealth.com. We have a full line of fashion release products and exercise products. Everything is in stock, ready to ship out. So when you have a chance, check it out. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel, Okramed Health on YouTube. Questions about exercises or injuries, just leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I do the best I can to get back to everybody. And don't forget, Okramed Health is here to keep you fit forever.